If you're looking for the best bang for the buck high refresh rate panel, then the Asus VG248QE has to be on your short list. Now let me start by saying that this is not a review about products sent to me for review. This is a review that has been months in the making with my own dilemmas on what to do about panels. Now I scoured the internet, I've checked Amazon review, Newegg review, I've reached out to my Twitter followers quite often and just could not make up my mind on panels. And many of you guys said that you have the VG248QE and you highly, highly recommend it. So I went ahead and took your guys' advice. I picked up three of these bad boys and let me tell you right now, the worst thing I ever did to my setup was gimp it with 60 hertz panels. Now, before I go a little bit deeper into that, let's go ahead and talk about the specs of the monitor really quickly. It is a one millisecond refresh rate. So that means there's no tracing, there's no ghosting. It is an extremely fast refresh rate. To kind of put that in perspective, my Acer panels, which I was using prior to this, have a five millisecond response rate, making these panels a five times faster response rate. Now I've always said that response time is not a big deal when it comes to gamers, but holy shit, the movement is so smooth on the screen if you have the horsepower to push those high frame rates that I just didn't realize what I was missing out on all this time. Now the VG248QE is a 144 hertz uh, panel. That means it can display 144 frames per second before we start getting any sort of image tearing. And that is massive when you have three GTX 780s overclocked like I'm running. So I was gimping them with these 60 hertz panels and I never even realized it. It is a backlit LED. It's got 3D content support, display port, VGA, although for the love of God, please don't plug anything into the VGA. Just pretend it's not even there. It's even got built-in speakers. Now it does have HDMI support, however, do not plug in anything in the HDMI port if you want to take advantage of the 144 hertz refresh rate. HDMI is capped at 60 hertz. So please don't just ignore HDMI. I don't even know why it's there to be honest. I guess that would be for console. But then again, if you had a console, you wouldn't be able to take advantage of the 144 hertz anyway. Now when you open up the box, you're greeted with some hard foam, but it's very, very thick hard foam protecting your investment uh, while in transit or being shipped or dropped or whatever. It's, I don't think anything's going to happen to this panel with the amount of foam that's in here. Now the back stand is actually already mounted to the monitor, but it does have Visa 100 by 100 mount, which is what I'm planning on using once my ErgoTech uh, three monitor stand arrives. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the future. Now the stand is already mounted. Like I said, all you've got to do is take the stand thing and put the base thing on and turn the screw and next thing you know, you're mounted up and ready to go. Now it is a four way ergo design so you can actually rotate the monitor portrait mode if you want it. Easily moves up and down with effortless, effortlessly. It's got a spring load in there. It's actually really, really cool. I really like the base. It's got some built in cable management. But there's some things I don't like about the actual uh, design of the monitor. And that is that Asus used a glossy piano finish everywhere on this, on the base, on the front, on the back. And I'm personally not a friend of piano finishes whatsoever. They attract dust, they attract fingerprints, and I personally wish that they'd gone with a matte plastic. But I digress, this is a minor thing. You guys may love the elegance of a piano polished plastic. Me personally, I don't, but I live in a dusty area. And uh, that's why I hate piano finishes. And it seems like all the monitors have that now. So whatever, that, maybe, I'm the, maybe I'm the weird one who doesn't like those. Now it's got a nice ventilated, uh, well, vent on the top of the monitor. And that's because this has an integrated power supply. It is not like uh, other LED monitors where the power supply is a separate power brick. Now with that said, it's pretty much got everything you need for connectivity for a high refresh rate, low response time, gaming monitor. And that's exactly who this is tailored to. Now this monitor comes in at under $300 most places. In fact, I put an Amazon link down in the description so you guys can look up uh, most current pricing. As you know, pricing is always going up and down. Now these are, I have the 24 inch model and I couldn't be happier with it. In fact, as you can see behind me, I've got three of them. Now let's go ahead and talk about what it's like to game on 144 Hertz monitors. And maybe you've been wondering if it's for you. And the question is, if you take first person shooters seriously, this is something you owe it to yourself if you have a high end gaming rig like I do. If you've got the horsepower to push more than 60 frames per second on a consistent basis, 
you owe it to yourself to at least go and look at these monitors. Now the color correction does need some work out of the box. It comes very faded. The blacks are not deep at all. They look very gray. Um, the colors are kind of muddied, but that's because they come not like a dynamic setting, like TVs tend to come from the store. Nice bright popping colors, they're very flat. But the cool thing is you can go online and download different profiles and different uh, user settings, and you can go online and find what other people are using and calibrate it yourself. And it's got multiple uh, scenery modes or whatever you want to call it on there that make it very easy to tune this to your liking. So if you give it some time and you actually calibrate it, you can get some pretty decent colors. Now it's gonna, it's not gonna come anywhere close to IPS or VA panels. I mean, it is a TN panel, so that means the off angle viewing does have a little bit of that foiling effect. It does have a little bit of that negative uh, viewing angle so that when you get above or below the panel, it starts to invert a little bit. But as long as you're looking at it with at least a 30 degree angle or flat or a single monitor, most of the time TN isn't going to be an issue. But then again, TN panels are what have the massively high refresh rate, low response time. And that's exactly what I was after. Now these panels are really, really cool. I've been using them in Battlefield 4 and I was just amazed at how smooth they are. And even in my three-way surround setup, we're staying well above 100 frames per second, usually sitting right around 140 frames per second. So I had the horsepower to push it and I couldn't be more happy. Now I thought about going with 1440p monitors, but because I'm on three uh, gigabyte GDDR5 cards, I'm already getting up to 2800 megabytes utilized on my graphics cards just in 1080p. So 1440 would have turned into quite a bit of a bottleneck. And I can't believe I said the word bottleneck. I have to go ban myself now. now I'm just gonna ban Coconut Monkey back there. He's, that's fine, he can take it. But everything is so smooth and it brings your game to the next level. I mean, you can just kind of, you can turn so fast and you can turn on fools and you can cap faces and just be gangster, I think. I think that's how, I think that's what the kids say these days. I don't really know. But all I can say is that it's so freaking awesome. Your friends will come over and they'll take over your system and they won't let you play anymore. Speaking of which, can I play now? Uh. Guys. In the Asus VG248QE. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention, it's apparently moddable with G-Sync. I don't know, I better start freshing up on G-Sync. I hadn't really cared a whole lot. But now that it's uh, something I can actually consider. Hmm. But I would like to play my game. No. I see you back there, you son of a bitch. And help. What'd you do? I'm gonna start the video now, okay? I think maybe I'm gonna start the video all over. I make some weird faces. Before you start filming, you might want to do that.